All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Danger Alerts, which is being made by forum user Norpo, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a series of customizable warnings, basically, to tell you that uh, your Kerbals are in trouble, and I cannot tell you how much I love this mod. There have been so many times when I've been playing this game and sort of spaced out for a moment or something and then realized, oh, a specific resource of mine is running low, or perhaps I'm trying to land on a planet, look away briefly, and only to come back and realize, oh, the ground is coming at me much quicker than I had thought. And, well, with this danger alert mod, it'll give you some lovely audio and visual warnings to tell you that maybe you should pay attention before your ship is a burning ball of wreckage. So, let's just jump right on into it. And there are no parts for this mod. It's more of a plug-in than a parts pack. So let's just go right to the launch pad and grab the Kerbal 2. I think that'll be a perfect little ship to use to test this out. And what you're going to want to pay attention to is this button right here, the lovely blue circle with an exclamation point. And this, when clicked, will bring up our Danger Alerts GUI so that we can mess around with the settings for the mod and, uh, you know, set the alerts to what we want. But that button is more than just a button to turn on our options. The button is also the visual alert. So once one of the alerts goes off, this blue ring will turn into a red ring. And so once that happens, you know that now oh, things are going bad. Now that's if you want to go purely visual, but if you like auditory sounds, what you have here in the options, you have the ability to change the volume of that uh, auditory alert that will come up. Now, if you don't like the sound and you just like using the little blue to red ring, you can turn off the sound altogether using this checkbox. But personally, I quite like the sound. I think it works well. Uh, so I always leave it on. And besides, I actually kind of think that this button, for being the visual alert, is a little bit too small. Because it is, all that changes color is the blue ring. It goes from blue to red. And I, I don't know, I just don't see that as uh, the most eye-grabbing thing. Mainly because it is such a small little thing here up in the corner. I'd prefer it maybe if the whole button went red or maybe something else on the screen happened. Because sometimes if the screen's a little bit chaotic, it can be missed, but that that is why I like leaving the sound on because, well, you get a lovely dinging noise. And that is the op- oh, actually forgot one option here. Uh, in the Collision and Resource tab, you can turn on or off your alerts manually for these individual alerts. Or if you want to turn all of them off altogether, you use this master toggle and it will disable all of the alarm checks. So one, with this off, no alarms will sound, and if any alarms are on, it will turn them off. So that is what you can use if you don't feel like flying around with the alerts that day. Now that is everything in the options tab, so let's move on to the collisions tab. And this is more or less the bread and butter of this mod, as this is how it got its start a couple of weeks ago when it first came out. It was purely a collision alert system. And so I wanted personally to wait until there was also resource alerts to, uh, you know, have in the mod as well before I checked it out. But the collision is where it uh, has had the most work done and I think where it really shines. And how this works is this tolerance right here, it basically is when the alert will sound. The higher this tolerance number is set to, the sooner the alarm will go off once you start plummeting towards a planet. So if you have the tolerance set really low, you're gonna be a lot closer to the ground before the alarm goes off. And of course, alternatively, the higher the number is, the higher up in the atmosphere or wherever you are, you'll be before the alarm goes off. And you'll want that alarm to automatically turn off once you do slow down. So that's why we have the minimum speed and the minimum vertical speed. Once your ship reaches these numbers, the alarm will automatically turn off. 
So the tolerance tells the mod when to turn on the alarm, and then the minimum speed settings tell it when to turn it back off again, because, well, you should reach a minimum speed and be safe. And it's quite nice that you can adjust these numbers, because of course you're going to have different speeds on different planets that you want to be at to land safely. And more importantly is on the tolerance, because of course, if you're landing on a higher gravity planet, you're going to be want to uh, have the warning come on higher up above the planet's surface. Whereas if you were landing on Minmus, for instance, Eh, with how low gravity it is, you can have the tolerance much lower because you don't need to slow down a whole lot before you can land safely there. So by adjusting these, it, you know, you can really change it to where you want it to be on a planet by planet basis, which is quite cool. And of course, you can just turn off the alarm altogether with this button, as I mentioned earlier or alternatively turn all of them off from here. But let's actually play around with this uh, collision one. Let's bring up our ship lander in hyper edit and turn off our stability enhancers here momentarily. Let's uh, set to current and we'll put us up to 250 should be a perfectly suitable altitude. So let's launch and there we are. Now, once I let go of this button with the tolerance set to 20, the alarm pretty much should come on right away. So I'm gonna be quiet once I hit this and notice the red circle will turn on here and the sound that does come on. So here we go. And there we go. We have that lovely dinging alarm and the blue circle turned red. Now let's do it one more time so you can uh, just make sure to see the circle and hear the sound. All right, and let's actually try the tolerance being lower this time. So with the tolerance being lower, it should take a couple more seconds before the alarm does go off. So let us do that now. And there we go. It took us a little bit longer and we were a bit closer to the ground before that tolerance came on. Now, if we switch it back to 20, I'm then going to manually speed us back up so that we get back to these minimum speeds. So let's just drop. There we go, the alarm is on. Let's activate our engine. And there we go, we have turned off the alarm because of course, well, we've reached that minimum speed that was necessary and we're good to go. And if I turn off the engine and let us free fall again, the alarm should come back on once we stop arcing. There we go, we're falling again. Come on, alarm. There it is. And this time, if we release the capsule and our parachute, there we go. The parachute has slowed us down sufficiently so that we are back to no longer having an alarm. And that's how the collision system works. It's quite nice, quite handy and again, can be customized to whatever you need it to be for wherever you're going to be landing. Of course, it may take a little bit of trial and error for you to figure out your numbers that you like on different planets, but hey, you'll be good to go. So let's turn off hyper edit here and actually revert our flight to launch and take a look at the resources. Now, one thing to point out though first is you'll notice we've reverted the flight, which means we've brought it back to the previous save file and our GUI is gone. But if we open up the GUI, our settings have stayed. And that is something I really like about this mod. It does have a persistent system for remembering what you've saved your alerts to, which is quite nice. So if we would have had this at five when we came back into the save file, it would have been five again. And even if you leave the game entirely and come back, it will remember what your last alert was. And that is quite cool, because it just means that you don't have to, you know, retype everything over again every time you come back into the game. It's quite cool. But now with that out of the way, let's go to resources. And actually, I'm gonna remove this real quick, because this is what you typically would see. See, it was remembering when I was testing out this mod earlier. So typically you'd come into the danger alerts and it would have nothing in here because, well, you haven't set any alerts for resources. So what you do is you hit this button here to add in a resource to uh, basically watch and have an alert for, which I quite like. It's not just by default watching all of your resources. You choose specifically 
which resources you want it to watch, which is, I, I like that. What I don't like though, is how you select the resource. Now it defaults to electric charge because that's just what it defaults to whenever you add a new one for the first time. But if you want to change it to one of these other resources, this is a text box. You have to manually type in the name of that resource. And now you're gonna type it in exactly how it is portrayed here. So electric charge, for instance, it is spelled exactly as it is here as one solid word with no spaces. So that's what you have to type into this resource box for the mod to then watch this specific resource, which I, uh, I like it and I don't like it. I don't like it because well, I would much prefer a selector in here, like a dropdown or something like that. But I do like it because with this text box, that means that you can have any custom resource that the modding community has ever come up with in your game. And all you gotta do is type it right here and it knows to look at that resource. So you don't have to fiddle around with making custom dropdowns or anything like that. It just knows that you want to watch Electric Charge because that is exactly how it's spelled here. Now again, I don't like it because I don't want to type that because, well, my typing's awful and I'd much prefer a drop down, but I do recognize the genius in it because it does mean we can watch any resource that you've ever added in and it's quite cool. And then besides the resource name, we have the percent limit. Now this will basically tell the mod when to warn us. So once electric charge gets below 20%, it will start to warn us. So if we bring back hyper edit up here and back to miscellaneous tools, we can bring down electric charge here, drain it down, and there we go. We have the alarm going off because it's below that 20%. Now, of course, this thing has uh, generators built in, so it will automatically, there we go, turn off the alarm once it recharges to the specific point that it needs, which is quite cool. I do like that. So you just gotta set whatever resource is that you want to watch here, put in the percentage here, and it can be anything you want. We can put it up to 85, and there we go. We have the alarm on because it hasn't charged up to 85% yet, but if we leave it there for long enough, it will eventually turn off the alarm system because, well, it's charged beyond that point, which it should get. There we go, excellent. And that'll work the same for any resource you add in, which to do that, you just add the resource with this button and you can add in multiple resources and you use arrow keys here to navigate between them. Now it always sort of defaults to whatever the last resource was that you were looking at. So when you get to here, you just gotta type in the next resource on alert number two and then type in another one for alert number three, four, etc., etc. And if you wanna remove them, you just delete it here. And of course you can turn on or off the alarm with this checkbox. And well, that's how you use this mod. It's pretty simple but pretty darn wonderful. And this is it at its current state. The mod maker is wanting to add in other alerts in the future, and I can't wait to see what other alerts we do get. I, I believe one of the priorities is to get a burning alert in here, so once your heat on your ship is getting too high, uh, that there will be an alert for that. I know some people have suggested in the forums a docking alert, so if you're coming in too fast for a docking, that'd be quite cool and just all sorts of other things. It'll be quite cool to see how this mod does advance in the future, but for now, we have lovely alerts for our resources and lovely alerts for our collisions, and it's just pretty wonderful. So if you'd like to download this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description, and I would definitely say to give it a go, as it potentially could be a lifesaver in this game, and I definitely know that I'll be keeping it around because, well, uh, I definitely need something like this. But yes, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today. And of course that you do come back for our next when we will hopefully be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.